Hey, what is up guys? It is your boy Speed here and today I want to talk about tilt. You know, just mentality in general. It's been a while since I made one of these videos and I think it's always important to kind of just get yourself in the right headspace. I mean, after all, solo queue and winning in solo queue is, you know, it's important to be a good mechanical player, right? You have to be able to outclick your opponents, cast your spells better, you know, deny better, last hit better, move around the map better, smoke quicker, Roshan faster. Whatever it is, there's a lot of mechanics to deal with. However, all mechanics go right out the window when you bring in mentality, especially if you bring in a bad mentality. You know, your mechanics just don't matter. I've coached almost 100 people now, and what I've learned is that no matter how much I teach people, if they don't have the right mentality, if they don't have like, you know, a, a mindset geared towards growth or, you know, going with positivity, and I'm not talking about positivity like, woohoo, you know, like, Go team, go team. You don't have to do that. But, you know, you just don't want to be the guy who's just running down mid at 20 minutes or, or you know, that when he loses one game, believes that they're never going to be able to get better. And so that's what I want to talk about in today's video. Just everything in terms of tilt, ways you can deal with tilt. And so if you are excited for this video, I would appreciate it if you could smash the like button and subscribe to help our channel grow. And of course, if you want to become broken, just like your boy Speed, you want to join the Broken Club, you got to sign up for the Game Leap website. It's the only possible way. It's the only way. And right now we are posting a video every single day and I think you guys will really enjoy it if you go check it out. I even just made a couple videos that I'd like to tell you about. So recently for the website I made a full clockwork course beginning from you know skill builds, item builds, talent builds all the way to no tails oracle mid. I did a replay analysis on his gameplay. I made a video on how to create space for your cores like how do you stop taking the wrong farm you know why do you continue to just grief your games you know as a space creator and so many more things. I did a one of those videos where I watch a low mar replay and I talk about everything they need to do similar to yesterday's recent video so you know all in all a lot of great stuff there and now let's get into the video. All right so so first things first, I want to talk about improvement and understanding improvement. So the first point I have is understanding that improvement is a long process. It's a very, very long process. And for a lot of people, they, they don't want to wait, right? They have no interest in waiting. They don't want to take the time and just understand or even admit that going up an MMR takes years, years and years and years. And I'm not talking about 25 MMR, 50 MMR, 100 MMR. I'm talking about 1,000 MMR. I'm talking about 2,000 MMR. So first off, I want to mention that, you know, for my journey, I went from 2.3 to 7.5 in the matter of about four to five years. Now, you know, whether or not you think that's fast or slow, it doesn't really matter. The point is, I average about 1,000 MMR a year. And so you should make that a goal of yourselves, right? That's one way to deal with tilt. Understand that, you know, your goal should be 1,000 MMR in a year, not 1,000 MMR in a month, which is most people's goals. They're like, ah, I have to stomp, 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 and go up 1,000 MMR in a month. It's unrealistic. And if you do go up 1,000 MMR in a month, it's probably because you play an insane amount of ranked, and it's very likely that you will also have streaks where you go down 500 MMR in a month or 1,000 MMR in a month. Does that make sense? Because I really do believe that your MMR should not be looked at as a short-term indicator of your skill, but rather a long-term indicator of your skill, right? So when you're looking at your MMR, try not to get tilted if you go down 100. Try not to get too hyped if you go up 100, right? The only way you know if you're actually improving is if you don't look at the short-term and rather you look at your improvement in terms of months or years. And so start doing that. Write down your MMR at the beginning of the month. Look at it at the end of the month, right? That's a good enough amount of time and then do it for a year as well if you plan on playing this game for a year. I know that sounds like a crazy amount of time, but hey, we're all addicted anyway, so <laughs> does it really matter? Next up, I'd like to talk about smurfs and account buyers, um, because I know for a lot of players, this can be a really uh, big point of contention, you know, even if you're not the type of person to complain about it, right? And just, you know, make it seem like smurfs are the reason why you can't gain MMR. I feel like most people just know that that's not the case, anyone who says that. I mean, I'm sorry, guys, if you believe that smurfs and account buyers are the reason you can't get MMR, you're out of your mind. I'm just being honest, because do you really think if Miracle or Arteezy were to start at 2k MMR that Smurfs, if they got unlucky, by the way, if they got unlucky with Smurfs, that they wouldn't be able to gain MMR? Obviously not, because they're better. They're just better at the game. If a Smurf was against them, they would crush them because they're better, right? And then, of course, if they had a Smurf on their team, they would just instantly win. And that's how Dota works. Sometimes you get Smurfs on your team, right? Sometimes you get Smurfs on the enemy team. Technically, I know for everyone who's about to comment this, yes, I know you have a higher odds to get a Smurf on the enemy team, and therefore it's unfair. Yes, okay, obviously. But then be the Smurf of your team. Do you understand what I'm saying? Be the player who's better than everyone else 
on your team because you've been improving and you're getting better, right? You should be able to beat Smurfs eventually. That's obviously the goal because they're, everyone gets them. You know, everyone gets them and yet some people go up and some people don't. So uh, I'll stop going on that note. But the second thing I want to say is Smurfs expose your problems. Guys, if you're playing against Smurfs and you feel like, oh, I lost to one, I really recommend you actually watch the replay, especially if you happen to lean against them because they're going to expose your problems. They're really going to show you what you're doing wrong because they punish it harder. That's kind of how Dota works. The better you get, the more you expose people's problems and amplify your own game. Right? And therefore they expose your problems, so make sure you look in those games. And finally, the last thing I'd like to say about Smurfs is that, you know, they're not rank 1. I think a lot of people, when they look at a Smurf, they're like, ah, oh, surely that is some immortal player or a tier 2 pro. Like, guys, a Smurf can be a legend player playing in the Archon bracket. A Smurf can be an ancient player playing in the, you know, in the Archon bracket. Sure, it could also be a divine player playing in the Guardian bracket. Obviously, I'm not denying that. But what I'm saying is, don't feel like they're unbeatable. At some point or another, you're going to start facing players of that caliber on a consistent level. And so you want to get used to playing against them now. And, you know, that's a good way to look at it, right? It's just a good way to hype yourself up. No matter who I'm playing against, I should be able to beat them at some point, right? Assuming your goal is to become the best, or at least better. So the next thing I want to mention is kind of just like a good point always. It's just always good to hear this. I even have to remind myself of this sometimes. <laughs> but Dota is meant to be fun. We, we should play Dota to have fun. Now, your fun could come in a lot of different ways. Your fun could come through competing. Some people are just very competitive. Your fun could just be by messing around with friends and teammates and all of this is okay. Now, I do think if you want to become better at the game, you do have to take it seriously. Now, you can take the game seriously and enjoy it, right? And that's why some people get better because they take the game serious and they enjoy the serious improvement. They enjoy the competitive aspect of improving in this game and anything really in life. You know, the competitive people do better because they strive for improvement. But nonetheless, Dota is meant to be fun. You're supposed to enjoy the game. And I really do believe that the reason why I went from 2.3k to 7.5 in four to five years is because I love the game more than anyone else. Now, of course, I can't actually back that up. I, there, I'm sure there's people who love the game even more than me and spent more time studying and playing than me. But nonetheless, I loved it. It consumed my life. When I was taking finals in high school, I was watching CCNC stream. When I was in my math class and they gave us iPads during my senior year, <laughs> you know, before they disabled Twitch, I was watching various streams. Now, do I recommend this if you're young? Absolutely not. Pay attention in school, kids. <laughs> but you, you get the point, right? Like, if Dota doesn't consume your mind to some extent, it's going to be hard to get better at. And surely that applies to anything in life. You know, the things you enjoy, the things you care about are what you're going to get better at because you put the time in. And that's what it's all about. You put the time in, and if you put the time in, you get better, right? And I think for a lot of people, Dota is not the number one in their life. They don't have the time to make Dota number one in their life. They have a job, they have kids, you know, they, they have rent to pay, whatever it is. But that means that, you know, you can't get angry if you're spending three hours a week playing Dota and not getting better. It's just how it is. And so, you know, do understand that there is a time barrier as well. And it just means don't get tilted. Just enjoy the game at that point, right? Make sure every game... You're having a good time. Now, my second to last point. Uh, I just want to say that, guys, there's no secret to improving. It's just like, you know, the typical, like, workout ad. Like, oh, doctors hate him because he figured out a way to get abs in a week. Like, no, obviously that never happens. It doesn't exist. You just have to do a bunch of, uh, you know, sit-ups and ab work exercises. You know, Russian twists. That's how you get abs. And the same thing in Dota. The way you get better and the way you last it better is by last anymore. Playing more 1v1s. The way you get better at learning rotations is by doing more VOD reviews and you know, playing more games to feel out what works, the way you improve map awareness is by looking at the map more often and watching the map when you're watching replays, right? And this is how you get better. There's no secret to improvement. It's fundamentals, it's practice, it's mentality and time, right? Now, of course, learning ideas that you get from videos like mine and the Game Leap website and other streamers and other YouTubers is all useful, but at some point you have to actually implement it. And this is one of my last points of the video as well, which I want to tie in here. But a lot of people have understanding in Dota, but they don't have skill. Guys, there is a lot of players who understand things on the same level as me, right? Probably not everything, but a lot of things, but they can't actually translate it into the game. 
So someone might know you have to get 60 CS at minute 10, but they can't do it on a consistent basis. Someone might know that they have to cast their spells in a very specific order, but they can't do it on a consistent basis. They might know they need to wrap behind their opponents and not trade in 2v1s and not pull aggro at very specific times and pull and stack pull at the right times and blah, 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 blah. And that's why Dota is such a hard game, but there's understanding and there's skill. If you hear the things you're hearing in my videos and you say, I already know all this and I don't know why I'm going up. It's because you haven't been able to apply it yet. You have to keep the idea in your head. You have to keep the fun fundamentals in your head, you have to have the right mentality and then go practice it. And that practice takes time. And when you add those things together, you eventually get better. And the last thing I would like to mention is get mentors, get a coach. Now, I know this sounds like a oh, like speed. He's just trying to advertise his coaching. No, I, I, I don't even have any real spots in my coaching. Like maybe I could take one person, two people. But the point is having a mentor and by the way, guys, this is not, you don't need like, I don't know what someone famous or smart, Bill Gates. You don't need Bill Gates to be your Dota mentor. What I'm saying is, if you're a 4K MMR, try to join a team with 5K or 6K MMR players. If you're 3K MMR, look for teammates that are 4 or 5K MMR or pub players just to play with. They're going to help you because hopefully they'll be able to tell you what you're doing wrong. They'll be able to flame you when you're doing things incorrectly. They'll be able to give you the tough love everyone needs to get better at Dota. And so that's a great way to do it. It's absolutely free. There's also free coaching discords. There's plenty of resources in the Dota community if you look for them to get you a mentor, get you a coach, whether or not you want to pay or not pay, doesn't really matter, but I hope that makes sense. And that's where I'm going to end the video. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this gives you, you know, some confidence, some patience and peace of mind when it comes to improving in Dota and having a good mentality and dealing with tilt. If you have any ideas or ways you deal with tilt, leave it in the comment section down below. I'm sure a lot of you guys have great ideas and great strategies and methods that you use to deal with tilt or, you know, great mentalities and ideas that you've developed over time in order to improve your mentality and so yeah leave them in the comment section down below don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one before you leave just want to say a quick message if you're trying to get better at dota or you just enjoyed that video uh, i know this is pretty general and you're gonna hear this quite a bit from me but i recommend you sign up to gamelink.com why because i put a lot of effort into the content over there and generally the effort i do there is different from the content you're gonna see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster. Because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end, because a lot of people just watch five minutes, they skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, get your discount right now by clicking the link, sign up, use the discount code that you're going to see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.